Hello, folks. This is Josh Collins. I am, uh, this is, uh, Protestant Podcast and Radio. Uh, we will be, uh, discussing, uh, Genesis chapter 8. Uh, if you're listening to this show and you're unfamiliar with what I'm trying to do, I'm basically wanting to impress upon people the need to get the foundational things of the Bible straight and understand some very important issues. That's the reason why I'm starting with the book of Genesis. You can go and listen to the other podcasts. Uh, I'll start with Genesis chapter 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and now I'm on chapter 8. I think that setting the foundation for uh, the book of Genesis in the book of Genesis is very important. Even if you go to church, uh, I think that it is ultimately um, a lot of churches are not setting up the foundations of the Christian faith right. Therefore, a lot of other things end up being uh, misunderstood and uh, misapplied and so forth and so on. So I'm starting in the book of Genesis as a way to set the foundation for the Christian faith. Now that doesn't mean that I'm looking at the book of Genesis and just uh, as if I don't know what the book of Matthew says, and the book of uh, Acts says. I'm looking at those while I'm going through the book of Genesis and making comments on on what the book of Genesis says. Uh, so it, I'm not divorcing myself from Christian doctrine. I am just showing within Genesis where our Christian doctrine really comes from, where is the foundation of it. And I think if we start there, perhaps we will end up where we ought to in what we uh, ought to be believing and accepting and practicing in our worship and really and truly uh, glorifying God and enjoying Him forever, which is the theme of my... Uh, Protestant podcast and radio. Uh, one thing, I want people to call in. I know I'm trying to get this thing started and get people interested. Uh, I Today I did um, start advertising on Facebook. So if there's people who uh, learned about, will learn, or are going to learn about this show on Facebook, uh, welcome. Uh, I am advertising in a local area. I'm not advertising uh, nationally on Facebook. I'm advertising within my local area, which is... Uh, Part of West Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Boot Hill, Missouri uh, area. W- to people who uh, are on Facebook in those areas, so we may actually. I want to build that up. We may actually end up reaching lots of people. Uh, so, I want people who are listening, who will be listening, or I want you to call in to influence what is said on this show. I will be nice to you, but I am willing to engage in serious theological debate. Uh, And I've done so in the past. Um... I have engaged a particular fellow named uh, uh, 
Jeremy Ballinger, an independent fundamentalist, uh, King James only Baptist, on pu- on on the radio. Oh, uh, and he was a tough cookie, but so was I. I won't. But that doesn't mean we can't. We should be able to engage in religious debate and discussion because this this is important that we get this right even if we have to struggle in these things we need to get these things right uh the call in number is 731 599 uh you can look on the comment section or whatever you can see I put the number on there too. It's seven three one five nine nine ninety five zero four. Uh you can call in. I also have my email address. Uh, if you want to email me, uh I'll be glad to interact with you that way and and uh discuss even what you email to me on the show. So um I'll go ahead and, and please do tell others about this show. If you don't want to tell those who uh, you think will be influenced the wrong way, tell people who uh, who you think can can deal with what I say here in an intelligent way, and ask them to listen to the show and call in. If you don't trust me. That's fine. Then you know who to trust. Tell them about the show and tell them to listen and call in because I intend to reach as many people as I possibly can with this show. So it may be important that you and those that uh, you respect uh, on the understanding of the Bible call in to my show. So we'll go ahead, I'll pray, and then we'll get right into the uh, lesson. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy to us. Lord, may I only speak the truth as it is in Jesus Christ. May I only say those things that are right. And if I speak any error, may I be corrected. May I understand more clearly either by those that who would speak to me or by me just studying and come to a better understanding myself. Either way, help me to uh, say what's true and may I edify to those who um, who hear what I have, have to say. I pray this in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we'll get right into it. Okay. Genesis chapter 8. The first verse uses the term remembered. This verb has the implication of covenant relationship. God gave the promise to save Noah, and one could say a sampling of all the kinds of animals of the earth. Many believers would say, many unbelievers would say that how could you have dinosaurs on the ark? That's easy. The dinosaurs were hatchlings. They were not full grown. Unbelievers may say, how could you have all the species of the ark? Noah only had to have all the kinds. The kinds can be a broad category. Take the different type of dogs. How many breeds of dogs are there? However, they all have the same bloodline. They simply evolved widely over decades and centuries. Humans have not evolved seemingly humans have not evolved seemingly nowhere near the variety that dogs have. Since dogs ha- would be an unclean animal, there would only there would only need one male and one female on the ark. When you understand that the kinds were broad categories, then the ark would be large enough to contain the needed animals. 
I believe in miracles. However, I do not think Mar the ark was a miracle. I think it was a normative meaning, not a supernatural vessel. It was not like the circus when 50 clowns come out of a little car. The ark was not a miracle clown ark. The, this was a norm, not a normal circumstance, but it was using normal and natural means to have this ark and its particular purpose happen. God remembering Noah and the animals on the ark changes the circumstance on the earth to have them to be able to come off the ark. Noah uses natural means to determine what the circumstances on the earth was. As a result, Noah removes the cover on the ark. A little bit later, God told Noah to bring his family and the animals off the ark. All life was commanded to go to fill the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. All life exited the ark. Noah worships the Lord by offering the clean animals on the ark that Noah built. He did what Abel did, which was to worship by animal sacrifice. This, without a doubt, points to the ultimate sacrifice of our God, Jesus of Nazareth, who was a descendant of Noah. The clean animals points to Christ's purity and holiness. The purity and holiness of Jesus Christ is innate to his nature and personhood. Just as what made these animals clean was innate to their very natures, the value of the sacrifice is found at least in part in the cleanness. If the blood of bulls and goats under the Mosaic Covenant could not take away sins, it is reasonable to assume that neither could the sacrifice that Noah was performing did not take away sin either. This only points to Jesus Christ who takes away sin through his sacrifice. Noah and his family's sins were taken taken away by the sacrifice of Christ the same way our sins are taken away. However, it was proper for Noah to worship God through animal sacrifice. This was the proper mode of worship at this point in redemptive history. We do not worship God in this particular manner now because the blood sacrifice of Christ has come about in history, our worship rituals, baptism, and the Lord's Supper are tied to the whole historical account. First Peter three twenty and twenty one shows that the ark was for Noah and his family in the worldwide flood. Their element of salvation, like baptism, is for us. Although Noah's family were in a saving relationship with the Lord before this, it was necessary that they enter the ark to be saved from destruction. Most professing Christians receive baptism. I'm not saying that there are not exceptions, but it is hard to think of someone being a real Christian without baptism. It's hard to think of a person being a Christian for any length of time without receiving the Lord's Supper. Noah's worship with clean animal sacrifice does correspond with our worshiping God with the Lord's Supper. Our worship is the same worship that Noah had. That worship is special and particular worship of God. The difference is only the point in redemptive history. We worship the same God as Noah under the same redemptive plan. We are, we are one in worship with Noah and his family. God gives a rather interesting reason to not destroy mankind again. 
It is because mankind is evil from the time that they are young. God is gracious to man. God is serious against sin. These aspects of God that are in a way to contradict each other, rather they complement each other. They are sweet. They are the sweet and savor nature of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God is not simplistic. God is worthy of all worship and adoration because he is a great, great and awesome. To praise and worship God is the ultimate purpose for mankind. These are the reasons why man has not ceased to exist since the ancient worldwide flood. The promise is of man not ceasing is tied to the earth having regular seasons. So there is a hint of a possible large destruction, but it's not clear that it might be. We know that the details... For We know the details from the New Testament. However, we have we looked at the last however we have looked at the last chapter of God's revelation. This is the early in redemptive history. The language is appropriate for the time. Even Peter refers to this Peter period as the ancient world. It is a rather early point in redemptive history. So, I'll go ahead and read the chapter for y'all. From the English Standard Version, and all you uh, King James only folks, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to offend you this time. Uh, English Standard Version. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God made a, a wind blow over the earth and the water subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were closed. The rain from the heavens w- was restrained. The waters receded from the earth continually. At the end of a hundred and fifty days, the waters had obeyed it. And in the seventh month, and on the seventh day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And the waters continued to obey until the tenth month. In the ninth, in the in the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot. She returned to him to the ark for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth so he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him he waited waited another seven days and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark and the dove came back to him in the evening and behold in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf So Noah knew the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth a dove, and she did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked. And behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, 
the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that every living thing that is with you and you of all flesh birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth so noah went out and his sons and his wife and his son's wife with him every beast every creeping thing every bird everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark then noah built an altar to the lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar and when the lord smelled the pleasing aroma the lord said in his heart i will never again curse the ground because of man for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever ever strike down every th living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. <clears throat> I thank y'all for listening. Uh, do tell others about this show uh, anybody wants to call in right now the number is 731-599-9504 that's 731-599-9504 um, I do appreciate everybody who uh, is taking their time to listen to this whether it's a lot listening to it live or uh, after I, I have it officially published Either way, um, uh, just know that every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, just in case you're out of our area or something, I do this sh uh, show, and um, I think uh, this show is what people need to hear. Um, is the alternative to what is taught in many churches now. Um, and we need a foundation laid to, for us to understand what we need to be believing. And starting in the book of Genesis is a good place to start. Um, Again, the telephone number is 731-599-9504. And uh, I do appreciate everybody who, who listened to this. May God bless you. Bye.